like you, I, uh, I feel heartened at this event, grim as the purpose of it is every year, to be with, with brothers and sisters in this city that, that feed my own heart and nourish my own spirit every year with that, that kind of faithful record through the decades of, of standing for something that's so much better than, uh, than the idea of war as a, as a response to things. This is an interesting day, you know, if you're here in Edmonton and you spend any time uh, taking in the news today, you would think that one of the most important things about this particular Friday is that it's the 25th anniversary of Wayne Gretzky being traded uh, away from the, from the hockey team. But there's many other things that we're not hearing about that relate to us gathering today. And of course, as Dave has reminded us, Fundamentally, there's that terrible bombing of the people of Hiroshima and Nagasaki that we that we can uh, slip away from keeping in our minds if if we aren't very deliberate about it. Today is also, as you may know, the UN's day for the indigenous people of the world, and uh, and so when we come to think about that day and, and realize that. The treatment, not just in this country, but all over the globe, of indigenous peoples, of first peoples who have allowed us and, and invited us into their lands that have been theirs for, for millennia, that we've committed, um, in many cases, genocide against those people in, in various kinds of ways. And so this day is another grim reminder there. We're also in the middle of the joy of celebrating Eid and some of us have been at and are going to, to Eid celebrations and it, it reminds of the, the importance that faith can have in our lives and yet when we think about that we also remember centuries of occasions where where religion has in some way played a role in, in people ending up killing each other and so when I was asked to just share a few thoughts this afternoon it might not be too surprising that the word that has been hanging inside of me through these days to, to come here is the word violence. Violence. I want to just ask you to pause for a moment and let that word vibrate inside your body, inside your spirit, inside your thoughts. Violence. Very often, my, my experience is that, that we find polite terms to talk about what underlies the choice to engage in war. And, and we talk about, you know, defense and security and safety and protection and national interest. Or we get sucked into the kind of glamorizing of things around war that, that the, the media and popular entertainment try to do. And what I just want us to do, and, and I, I know it's not very comfortable, but for these moments is to just say as we, as we come to this commemorative service, to say, let's go back to what's really at the center of, of this activity that happens sadly too often in the world about this word violence because that's the word that really should be linked to war not the kind of things we see in, in Hollywood movies not the kind of ways that our, our political leaders may often try to uh, pump us up or indoctrinate us about a necessity for this kind of behavior and I know I'm talking to people that, that understand that deeply in your own lives but I think we need to deliberately come back and, and think about a word like that and, and understand how blunt, how ugly it is. Our English word comes from the same root as the word violate. It's a word that has these kinds of synonyms if you look it up in dictionaries. It's connected to inflicting pain and suffering, to harm, to desecration, Injury, brutality, 
murder, torture, slaughter, terror. These are really ugly, uncomfortable words to say out loud. And yet they're the words that form the body of, of when people slip into being prepared to participate in acts of war against each other, to kill each other. That's what this word, violence, reminds us of that's there. I, I wanted to just illustrate it for you. Um, and, and I have some of my grandchildren visiting with me and, and they <coughs> might be bored, you know, just having to listen to Granddad talk again. So I want to just talk, illustrate violence because violence is a pretty blunt thing. And so it, it behaves very bluntly. And with violence, we have a tool like a hammer that that smashes things to pieces. That's the purpose of violence. That's the ugliness of violence, is to break and, and destroy. Or, we can think of violence sometimes not in that violence of the hammer smashing the rock, but the file that grinds down slowly over time and crushes and rubs people away. Those are the kinds of metaphors, the kind of images that occurred to me when, when I was thinking about this idea of, of violence. But I'm also reminded by thinking and dwelling on this ugly word and this ugly thought, this ugly image, I'm also reminded that when we let that word vibrate a little bit in us and we notice how uncomfortable it makes us feel, how, how sick the sound of it is in our minds, in our spirits, even in the cells of our bodies, that in that we find the energy that calls us to the work of peacemaking. And so I want to just turn in these last couple of minutes to remind you that there, that there, is, an option, there is an alternative. And to say to you, again, as we know from the struggle and the commitments of you people through your lives, that that peace is not something that kind of mystically floats down um, in the sunshine from the clouds. It's not about the unicorn and the flowers in, in the meadows. But peacemaking is also about work. It's about a call to do, a, to be engaged in a struggle. Peacemaking isn't work for sissies. It's work for people that are prepared to struggle against forces. That are, that are always ready to draw us into that other stream that moves towards violence. I think peacemaking is further complicated in our comfortable world because it's closely linked to the idea of justice. And justice says we can't have peace unless we have a fairness in how we treat each other. And so we've got to make sure that, that we some to be more or to have more and others to be less or to have less where we're pushing some to the outside where we're draining the energy and the, the vitality of, of others and so we have to have a deliberate intention to look for the evidence of injustice if we're going to be people that engage in peacemaking so this is tough work when, when it's often easier to, to be um, uh, just going along in our comfort. I want to close by reminding you of one of the tools of peacemaking that's been particularly in my thoughts as well in these last days. You know, I think that a lot of the power of those that promote violence and get peoples and nations ready to kept apart from each other. When we're alone in our little corners, we're much more susceptible to being indoctrinated by poisonous messages and, and gradually slipping into maybe even thinking that that's all right. And so that's why I love this event every year. We come together.
together as community, we come together as people, and we go away stronger because we've looked at each other and we've said, in our community, there is an alternative to the lonesomeness that draws us down the path of, of violence. And so we need to, in our peacemaking work, we need to look for simple things like that and remember that opportunities to come together in community are vital to our peacemaking work. Renee and the hundred plus young people that she's got gathered across the river at the university at the Global Youth Assembly. It was so great to see, and, and I know some that were there uh, yesterday, Ed and, and others, uh, know the, the energy that's there amongst those people. Learning tools about standing up in the community for human rights. I want to invite you, and if you haven't yet got a, an invitation, my, my granddaughters have them on the blanket here, invite you to our celebration of Daughters' Day that's two weeks from set from tomorrow at City Hall, another time when we hope hundreds of Edmontonians will come together to celebrate the positive message that we build peace by recognizing the, the fair and just treatment of all the daughters in our community. That, that as they have opportunity to, to contribute, um, they, uh, they help us to make a healthier, a more peaceful society. So let's, um, let's leave today remembering the, the ugliness of that image of violence and the way it breaks. You also were, were handed as you came together by my granddaughter a little smooth stone. And those stones can be our reminder of the other approach. Instead of violence that breaks and grinds down, when we come up at the, at the end of the ceremony to place flowers, I want to invite you each to bring those shiny stones and to gather them here. And by itself, that one stone that you're holding now in your hand, it's not very much. It's a pretty feeble little thing, isn't it? But by the time we get our 30 or so stones gathered in a little mountain here, we have something that's got a lot more body to it and that could accomplish a lot more. And so that's the peacemaking option. We bring our tiny little feeble stones together with each other and we build communities that say no to violence, no to war, no to there ever be any more of these horrendous events, whether it's the village by village genocide of First Peoples or the one day slaughter of, of tens of thousands of people that we remember on, on August 6th and August 9th. We remember that there is another way and that, uh, that we really can be part of that. So thank you for, for uh, being here today and, and your work.